So in this video I'm going to show you how to make this open shell stitch which is what I've used for my souffle sweater using a two ply kid silk mohair blend. The one I use for my sweater is um, May for Mayflower from Hobby and it's called uh, Super Kid Silk. Haven't got the ball band for that. Um, for the swatch I'm using this yarn I bought in Norway which I do not know how to pronounce so please forgive me. Um, it's by Dale Garn and it's Tin or Tyne Kid Silk Earl. This one is a slightly different blend because it's got 53% uh, kid mohair, 34% silk and 13% wool. So this one's got a little bit of wool in it. Um, but a lot of these types of yarn that are all listed as two ply, including actually Rowan Kid Silk Haze and Debbie Bliss Party Angel. This one's a, got 72% mohair, 24% silk, and 4% metallized polyester. Um, they're all much of a muchness. However, if you're unsure, you will need to check the yardage per 50 gram ball. Uh, to make sure you're kind of getting a similar result. So why this stitch pattern? Well, it's quite well known that crocheting with kid silk uh, or mohair can be a little bit tricky in regards to frogging. So when you try and undo your work, all these little uh, filaments tend to mesh together and make it really difficult to undo. Therefore, stitches that are worked into spaces um, rather than into actual stitches tend to be much easier to work and frog um, because it's also quite difficult with this sort of open lacy effect to see oftentimes it's difficult to see where the tops of stitches are and where you're meant to be going so any stitches where you're working into predominantly working into spaces tend to work best with these kinds of fluffy yarns um, if you prefer written instructions, you can find them on my website with a bit of a photo tutorial. Um, and also, if you prefer charts, um, that's also available on my PDF download on my website. You can find the link in the caption to the video. I'm going to be using a 4mm or G hook, but of course um, you can use whatever size hook you would like to get your desired gauge and fabric drape. So I'm using a 4mm hook to make my swatch, which may or may not be the hook I'm using for my final item. So for our swatch, we are going to go ahead and we are going to make a chain, a chain of 24. And for this chain, you don't want it to be too tight, um, but at the same time, you don't want it to be really loose either. You just want a kind of... I'm just making it ever so slightly bigger than my hook size there. So that's my chain of 24. Next up we're going to make our first open shell stitch, which is the main feature of this pattern. So we're going to do that into the sixth chain from the hook. I like working into the back ridges. So I've turned my, I rolled my chain over. It's a little bit difficult to read this chain. Um, this is just a swatch when you come to make the, uh, for my, if you're using this stitch to make my sweater, um, don't worry, we won't be working into a chain like this. We'll, we'll be starting off with something else. This is just to help us get our, uh, make our swatch to make sure we got the right tension. So I'm going to go into the sixth chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, which is there. I, as I said, I like working into the back ridge. I'm going to put two double crochets, which in UK terminology is two trebles. One. Two. So the trick with working with this um, very fine yarn is to be quite gentle with it. Don't try and, um, you know, crochet too tightly with it. Next up for this open shell stitch, we're going to do a chain two and then two more double into that exact same chain. So I'm just making sure that chain two wasn't rolling around my hook. Two 
too much. Okay, so it should be looking something like this. You've got this chain section here and then your first open shell stitch. So part of this chain that you've made, if we put a little imaginary bend in there, part of this chain that you've skipped, part of it is the bottom, and then three of these chains are counting as the first stitch of the round. Next up, I'm going to skip four chains, one, two, three, four, and into the fifth chain, so I'm going to yarn over into the fifth chain. I'm going to make another open shell. So I'm going to put two doubles, which is a UK treble. So make sure you've got a good free flow, good free flow of yarn. So two doubles or two UK trebles, chain two, and another two doubles or two UK trebles into the same stitch. So that is the second open shell stitch made. So that is the sequence. It's skipping one, oops, do a yarn over first, skipping one, two, three, four, and then into the fifth chain doing another open shell, which is two double, chain two, Two double. We've now got three shells. Let's make another shell. So skip four, one, two, three, four, into the fifth shell. This fifth chain, rather not shell, you're going to make the fourth shell, which is two double. Two UK treble, chain two, and another two double, which is two UK trebles. So you should have four shells. And this yarn is so pretty with the different colours in there. I bought this yarn in Norway actually. And the last thing we do to finish off this row is to skip two and place one double get in there into that very first chain that you made. So end of row one should be looking like this. You've got this chain bit at the beginning which is counting as part of the base but then also three of those chains is your first stitch. You've got four shells and then one double at the end. Let's do row two. We're going to chain two and turn the work to the other side. Now this chain two is never counted as a stitch, uh, nor do we ever work into it. It's just to get us up to the right, house, right height and avoid having to work into that horrible chain three that is uh, traditional with working uh, flat fabric in crochet. Next up, we're gonna put one double, which is a UK treble, into that very first stitch, which was the last double from the previous row. And then nice and easy, into this chain two space between this open shell stitch from row one, you're going to put another open shell stitch. Chain two, so you're putting two doubles in there, or two UK trebles, chain two, and then another two double or two UK trebles. So that's why these kind of stitches where you're working into spaces rather than stitches tend to work much better with yarns like this, like mohair, because um, this is very difficult to pull back if you go wrong. It really gets itself tangled up. But if you're working into spaces rather than stitches, A, it's quite difficult to see tops of stitches with this yarn, uh, so it's much easier to work into spaces. And B, um, this causes less tangling than going through tighter areas such as stitches. So obviously we are at the beginning and end of the rows um, but if we had to frog this or rip it back it wouldn't be 
quite as difficult or virtually impossible as it would be if we were uh, working into actual proper parts of the stitch. Anyway, so let's jump across to the next chain two space in the next shell and we're going to put another open shell. So that's two double, chain two, And again, you do have to make sure you've got a good free flow of yarn with this because you don't want things tightening up as you're trying to crochet because you will distort the stitches. So that's row two, shell number two. Let's do shell number three, jump straight over into the next chain two space and make another open shell. Two, one, two. That's the third shell. Now let's jump straight across to the fourth, making the fourth shell in the next chain two space. Chain two and two double. So row two is, rows one and two are the kind of anomaly rows and then after that the pattern is more or less the same. It's slightly normally with the end of row two because we're putting the last stitch into um, the top of that chain three turning chain. So the easiest way to work that out is find that last double. That's the top of the last double, which means the top of the turning chain must be this next one to the left of it. And that's easier than trying to count stitches. So the end of row two. You should have your second row of shells. You've got four shells. You've got a double at the start and a double at the end. Let's do row three. So this is the row. All subsequent rows are basically the same as this. Chain two, turn the work. Put one double into the very first stitch, which was the double or UK treble from the previous row. Next up, you're going to put an open shell in the chain two space of the open shell from the previous row. And you're going to do that another three times. So, not going to lie, when you first start crocheting with this yarn, it does feel a bit weird. But as with all things, once you get the hang of it and once you kind of adjust to crocheting with it, very quickly uh, becomes quite fast and quite easy. So don't be put off by feeling slightly cack handed to start with if you're not used to working with this kind of yarn. Um, you will adjust and it will even I haven't crocheted with it for a while and it feels a bit odd, but I have knitted, a, knitted, crocheted a couple of sweaters with this and I can assure you that you become accustomed to it. Let's make this last, last shell. Fourth shell for the swatch. And then we finish the row with a double crochet. So this time we're skipping the two stitches from the shell and we're crocheting in the top of that double crochet that was at the start of row two. So this is what it's looking like after row three. Rows four, five, six and seven, which is what we need for our swatch, are going to be worked identically as row three. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back at the end. So I'm just coming up to the last open shell stitch for this last row of our swatch. Um, last stitches into the double crochet at the start of the previous round. So I just got to skip that double, that double and go into that double on the end. And cut the yarn 
yarn over and pull the tail through to fasten off. So that is my swatch. Um, I now need to wash and block it to make sure I get an accurate representation of the actual size of my swatch.